you kind of had finding those niche uh, niche opportunities to build occidental management, mm -hmm. uh, which became I don't know I don't know when you named it that or when you kind of started calling it a management corporation instead of just you kind of investing in things. But I guess we want to hear your journey with that a little bit more sure. to where it became today. Yeah, okay. so the name originated from the Occidental Building. Occidental Building. Okay, yeah, so which is the oldest commercial building in Wichita. Okay, so okay. Uh, that's at 2nd Street in Maine. And so uh, it uh, you have the Epic Center, which is the tallest building in the state. <laughs> And then you have the Occidental building across the street that is technically the oldest commercial building in Wichita, mm -hmm. built in 1873. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. so um, from that standpoint, uh, that was the first commercial property that I bought of any magnitude. And so we were sitting in the office. In fact, we were sitting on a couple cardboard boxes because uh, our office furniture hadn't arrived yet. <laughs> And I was talking with, uh, at the time, my girlfriend, which is my wife now, and we were talking, and I had talked her, talked her into leaving her insurance. Uh, she was a claims manager for uh, American Family Insurance. And so I talked to her about uh, becoming my property manager, and I said, hey, if uh, we team up here and you leave your position, then we can have lunch every day together. We can have dinner together. We can go on vacations <laughs> That's at the so same wise. time together. So many different yeah. levels. And I said, look, you know, we can we can work together. Yeah. And so I said, you do the property management and I'll do the leasing and I'll do the other items involved. And so uh, we shook on it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so we were sitting there and we said, well, what do we want to call this? And I said, well, God, we're sitting in the oldest uh, commercial building in Wichita. Uh, you know, the Occidental building. I said, why don't we just name it Occidental Management? And uh, very simple, very mm -hmm. straightforward. Occidental, what it means, you know, it's pinnacle or, or, you know, the top, the elite. Uh, it has a number of connotations to it that are positive. Okay. And so we thought, you know what, that's, that's a good one. And also we're picking a name that people also know the Occidental building mm -hmm. is an iconic building. And so we thought, you know what, that's a really good brand tie-in that we could that we could also uh, do something with. Okay. Very good. And so, of course, uh, we have uh, Bob Abram here, and yeah. he uh, is along with us, and Dina, and uh, our marketing uh, team. And uh, of course, Bob uh, was uh, worked with us on the very first um, uh, of our marketing and branding, and kind of our bird icon that yeah, we have today yeah. mm -hmm. and you know it uh you know the tagline with that is where i did is take flight and so it being kind of an aviation community uh it you know uh our logo means a number of things to us but at the end of the day it, it means where ideas take flight so we're a creative idea company and we're always looking to advance we try to be comfortable with uncomfortable You'll hear me say that a lot when we talk, but that just means that we always want to be breaking new ground. And just like a lot of your listeners or uh, a lot of the WSU students, uh, a lot of people in entrepreneurship, when you first start, you're not going to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And you have to get used to that. You have to get inspired by it. And so what that means is a lot of times uh, you're going to be put in situations you're not comfortable with. But the reason what's, why that's a positive is you're breaking new ground. You're stretching mm -hmm. yourself. You're getting yourself out of your comfort level. Taking risks. And you're taking risks. Yeah. Now, I'll, when Ooh, you take we'll risks... We'll get to that later. For, yeah. Yeah. So when you take risks for, uh, risk for risk's sake, that's gambling. Mm. And I'm not into gambling. Okay. But okay. when you take calculated risk, there you go. that's a lot different. Mm -hmm. So when you calculate it, the upside and the downside, and you put it in perspective and you say, look, the upside outweighs the downside, then I think that's a positive calculated risk that you're taking. Uh, throwing dice and gambling, uh, that's, you know, that can go either way. That's and, just pure risk. And, and yeah. that's just pure risk, and, and we try not to do that. Mm -hmm. What has been the biggest calculated risk you've made and some of them that haven't worked out and some of the ones that have worked out. Yeah. So uh, from a monetary standpoint? Whatever you'd like but to yeah. take it. Yeah, so I mean, if you want to throw it in terms of dollars, I mean, uh, our, probably our biggest risk is, you know, 
two hundred and thirty million dollars on a project, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, pretty big. And game. and signing, uh, you know, uh, notes to that effect, right? Yeah. Uh, even though you have limited or no, you know, potential non recourse to that situation, it still is a risk. Uh, you know, uh, one that's not been successful. Uh, you know, I once invested in a hotel sight unseen with, uh, you know, uh, from a standpoint of just trying to uh, support a friend and mm -hmm. uh, their opportunity that they wanted to do. I never went to the hotel, never was there, never mm -hmm. saw it. That's very unusual mm -hmm. for me to do. Uh, and so a good life lesson in the standpoint of, yes, you want to help out friends. Yes, you want to help out uh to move initiatives forward, but you still need to make good judgments. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, it, for where I was in life and economics, it wasn't a big, it wasn't a big risk. Yeah. And so, uh, and the individual that I was trying to support is a very capable person. And, and so in my book, at the end of the day, it was a worthwhile risk, but it, you know, at the end of the day, we sold, sold out of that thing and, and got some of our money back. But, uh, that is something that, from my standpoint, uh, was maybe a little bit out of character uh, in that I like to really make sure that we understand what the risk level is and, and we're pretty hands-on. So, you know, 99% of what we do, we're very hands-on, we're very much within the controlling interest, and we're very much have our team working on that together. And from there, I think we're very comfortable that we can be successful. Mm -hmm. okay.